Welcome along to episode three of Outdoor Gear Chat. And we're talking, well, today's subject is My Feet Stink. Um, yeah, the, it's it, uh, Socks and My Feet Stink. Uh, so uh, I'm joined by Kathy. There. Hello. All right. How are you? Hello. Um, Hi. And I'm Wayne. Do we need to introduce ourselves every time? We, do, do we? Yeah. Oh, Sorry. I think, oh, yeah, I think we should. Go I think on, we then. should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm Kathy, and I'm the uh, co owner and director of the J Brown Shops in Snowdonia and the Climber Shop in Ambleside. And I'm your host, Wayne, um, a serial charity adventurer. He says, being very amused by the tag that's been given to him by 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 my by my co-host here. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll just launch straight in there. You say, yeah, with with anecdote anecdote ahoy then with my feet stink and looking at foot care on that basis. So cha- ch- yeah, um, serial charity adventures have, in my in my case so far have involved a lot of foot travel. Uh, a, lot, a lot more running stuff and we've talked ultras before haven't we so um yeah and we yeah we do, we want we're wanting to cover off all sorts of thing around hygiene comfort blisters and fit so i i i'm i'm just going to launch straight in there and preempt what you said before we before we started about my experiences of running across a vast patch of sand that i'd done yeah uh, i i heard you'd gone for a little trot across uh, uh across the sahara yeah yeah and uh, I, I always say with with amusement i don't like to talk about it i don't and then launch no, into clearly. talking about it and uh yeah they see <laughs> how many years ago is it now it's uh, uh not yeah blimey charlie it's nine years ago now it's just it just turned so yeah i did, I did the marathon de sable nine years ago um and other other bits and pieces, some 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 have tried and failed, but uh, that I think that that was definitely the, the pinnacle so far. But foot care was a huge part of that, and you read these horror stories, particularly of people's the the phrase is people's feet, the bottom of people's feet falling off. And I think I might have mentioned that last week actually. So the, the, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine you've got uh, heat, which is like the the enemy. I mean, that's how blisters are created, mm. isn't it? it? They're created by heat, whether that's friction heat whether that's chemical heat whether that's um uh, fire burn heat that's that's um that's how they're created so to have that kind of just perpetual heat your foot stuck in a hot shoe and then sand which is just the other heinous nasty horrible abrasion and uh uh just yeah another friction device if you like to uh to munch your feet away i can't i can't imagine and how many days were you running seven seven seven, seven. yeah so oh. mar- well it averages out marathon a day for seven days yeah it's, yeah but it oh. doesn't because the longest day is over two days and you do that was 50 miles for us so it was yeah it was a l- long old distance through yeah 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 but, but i guess that but then my my take on that and doing loads and loads of reading and you know there's some all sorts of brilliant people in the UK who can give loads of advice on this. So I know Andy Mouncey, for example, has done some great stuff on foot care and how you, you know, and then, um, yeah, the few of the serial uh, offenders that do the MDS have also done it. But I think it's, it's, it's ju- it is just looking after your feet. If you're going to be on your feet for a long time, no matter what it is, making sure that you've got the best possible kit to do that. And coming back to the point we'd, 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 we'd mentioned, I think, in the last two episodes about you know not not wearing cotton socks <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like tick right number one that's that's a brilliant but no cotton yeah exactly but but my my absolute revelation for it was uh discovering in gingy socks oh yeah and yeah in gingies yeah yeah i think we, i just go misty eyed over the in gingies uh yeah. because uh yeah they're on, on a much um uh, lower scale in the running <laughs> uh, uh, way of things. Um, I got um, I got stuck being one of the worst um, gear shop owners in the world. I run out of time. I'd, I'd gone planned a training run with a friend. Um, I'd needed new shoes, so the day before I went on the 32 mile trot. Um, I grabbed the shoes out of the box, grabbed a pair of in gingers grabbed an awful lot of um anti blister plasters vaseline uh, anything i just had i just basically just took everything off the wall and put it in a bag and went and uh uh did my 32 miles ex- expecting to be absolutely lacerated um but with my little in gingers and my little shoes um blister free which I, I was in shock 
I still am. Two yeah. years on. Well, um, in, can't believe it. I think one one of the things for me, weirdly, I always used to get, um, and I don't know why 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 the Injinji sock particularly. If you're listening and you don't know what they are, they're basically uh, sort of a foot glove sock, aren't they? They they you know they 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 individually go around each toe, which is a bit weird to find to start off with because it pushes your toes apart. And and can be a bit yeah. weird with your shoe fit, can't it? But um, it can because it encourages um, proper toe splay, which of course is absolutely essential for for, for running and, and and long distance running. But when you put them on, you do look like you've got monkey feet. Uh, they're, they're gloves for your feet, essentially. They're all kind of woven in one process, and you look down and you've got these like ten little individually wrapped sausages. On your <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but you, yeah, you, you you term on monkey feet is right, and. Uh, we're gonna to have to come back to. I'm just making a furious notes now, but but like sort of the barefoot running principles and monkey feet. We're gonna to have to come back to that at some point, I think. And whether that's today or another time, I don't. We got yeah, lo- lo- loads of anecdotes there. But I was yeah, was the the on the Injinji thing. I think, and I think you've just mentioned it there with the way that they're produced. Is I used to get loads of uh, heel blisters. And uh, since switching to using Injinji, I've never, never, ever had a, a blister on my heel, and it's really, really strange that that I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know why no, that's so I mean, different. There's a huge amount of science. Again, you know, we sort of keep going back about the science in in outdoor equipment. Um, but they, they, it really is in socks, um, the, the little sort of foot coverings that sort of live in the back of your drawer. Um, there's, uh, they're really important and, and, and there's a huge amount involved in them, even down to the way that they're woven um, and being given extra cushioning around your heel. And they're created to have a, like a three dimensional um, heel as well. If anybody's tried hand knitting a pair of socks and turning a heel, it's incredibly difficult. Um, so all of these machines are, are made to basically create this, the socks in, in one go with flat seams as well. Mm. So there's, uh, if you look at a, a technical sock, there's, there's, there's really hardly any seaming yeah. at all. Um, there's an awful lot going on in construction, in um, weave, in choice of um, denier and the the choice of the width of the filaments yeah. um it's it's all sort of computerized and, and made to be woven all in in very specific areas so these socks if you put on a pair of modern socks they'll fit around your foot they'll fit snugly mm. they won't wrinkle um they'll maintain their shape um and it's all because of the how they've been built mechanically to fit around your foot and if you think of the shape of your foot it's pretty complex yeah yeah absolutely and like like you were saying, the thickness at different parts and how that's managed or produced is something else, isn't it? And then and then yeah, that that, that and again, you're just explaining that I could never figure out why there's no apparent seams around toes. On on, on yeah, again on on this particular on the, on in Gingy, it's just like well, where are the seams? How do they manage that? It's like it's witchcraft, isn't it? Manufacturing witchcraft. <laughs> but then then I guess that's the that's the, that's part of the process, isn't it? But it is and that because because yeah. I was like well. Yeah, in, in this yeah, the particular example, like you say, the 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 big thing is getting sand between your toes, and then you just get that this this movement, this rub, rub, rub with a little, tiny little piece of sand or whatever, and it's just it, you might you might as well just be you know slicing a razor blade along it over time. But again, with those with these within Gingy, providing I was getting uh, you know emptying the sand out every now and then, and it wasn't that often. It was you know I I, I think I only ended up with a, a few blisters on on particularly on my small toes, um on my little toes rather, and that's that was that was yeah the, without getting too geeky about it. I had a pair I I ran in Innovate Rock Lights, which were amazing. Which were, the grip was fantastic for the desert, um bizarre, weirdly enough, uh, and I had sand gaiters on at first, and the sand gaiters. Oh, I was going to ask about sand gaiters. Yeah. Well, they but they were the worst part of all the kit that I wore. I'd been those halfway through day one, I think it was. Um, oh, really? Because I yeah, the, so you r- running through the sand and everything, and all all yeah. If you don't have the gaiters on, sand's coming through the front of your your shoes. But as soon as you put the gaiters over the shoe, I could literally fee- feel my feet swell with the heat. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. So I was like running along, and I could feel my feet swelling and swelling and swelling and swelling. And I had there was slight. I'd, I'd bought ones, which were, a great piece of advice was buying shoes that were too big for you. 
because you yes. you know your feet are just going to swell because it's hotter but but it, they were swelling uncomfortably and i knew it was going to be an issue so and then looking around and it, yeah we, we, were, we were catching them or lots of people were catching them on their uh, it's like vol- really volcanic rocks or really abrasive and they were just getting ripped to shreds and i was just like Do you know what i just i just got rid of them and and that that was the best thing i ever did so about four times each day i'd just sit down tip tip all the sand out my shoe and 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 crack on and that was yeah that was brilliant for me worked worked fine like i said never really had ma- major issues whereas other guys that were in my tent were yeah it's you know yeah, the oh, memories no, the know. memories make me feel <laughs> nauseous i'm not gonna go into it and uh yeah good a good a good friend that I spent a lot of time with um, works for Al Jazeera. Actually, he's a, a, hi Pete, if you're listening. Um, I think on the on the was it the fifth or sixth day, uh, I went to, I went to see him, and he basically he was he was taking gaffer tape and and strapping it around his trainers, just like rolling, 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 rolling. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I can't. If I take my shoes off again before I finish, I, he said, I don't want to see it. I don't want to smell it i don't want to look at it and he's like oh my goodness me right and and yeah the, you know people were saying the feet were going like you know like steak steak is it steak tartar or it's the raw where it's been uh, battered yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah. He's just like oh flipping yeah. it do you know how how have we ended in that state as you know there's some fairly pro athletes there and yes i guess it might have been that i wasn't moving as fast but anyway that oh well yeah. that's always yeah 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 slowing yeah. down your pace less sweat well exactly yeah and, and taking the time to empty the sand out me out of my shoes yeah. but but they were they were absolutely brilliant as a sock and i well very rarely wear anything else most of the time now for that reason because great value last for ages um and and uh, yeah they're just fantastic and uh, i guess the flip side is the sort of the the bridgedale style sock as well the more the chunkier one isn't it and so yeah. and, and yeah, the the uh in gingy socks are definitely the marmite of socks um people are either like oh right yeah i'll give them a go or like no way i'm not having anything between my toes no can't cope or and yeah. sometimes i'll just try it on and they'll be like, no 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 that's yeah. not for me and uh, uh and that's absolutely fine you know we're, we're all different um but the, the traditional toeless sock if you like um as you say like the bridgedales the the, the law pens that we sell there's a place for those as well and um uh, they're just again they have so much technology in them you don't you, they still allow for toe splay because they're made with elasticity built in and uh, covered in art. Oh, if you look at um, the websites in particular, they're sort of manufactured with a cross that goes uh, over your foot, so you, they'll support under the arch as well. And uh, and as you sort of mentioned, those high impact areas, you've got the um, the additional cushioning. Some of them will be woven very lightly on the top to allow for ventilation as well, so all of that sweat can come out of the top. They'll have a um, a forward flex element as well so on the front of your ankle they'll be woven in such a way so that the fabric will have more elasticity so that it won't bunch up because of again on by the where the tongue of your boot is if you're walking yeah. uh, or if you if you if you're in your running shoe and um, that can create issues as well uh, with the muscles on the the front of your ankle as well so the socks are built to allow for articulation too. Um, one thing I do have to say with uh, modern socks is some of them will be made um, so anatomically, critically, that they'll have a left and a right. And yeah. you've got to be a bit wary of that on a bleary-eyed morning if you've got an alpine start <laughs> or uh, if, uh, <laughs> if you have a, a way on an expedition and you're not uh, uh, not paying attention. Uh, or, or And it's very critical when it comes down to in gingers because there's nothing worse than uh, opening your last pair of dry socks and just like, you you're going to put them on and discover you have two left, two left. socks. Yeah. There's no going back Brilliant. when you've got two well, socks. You can't put those on the other foot. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that yeah yeah it's without without cutting the toes off and even that yeah i was just gonna say i i had i had um i have a pair of socks or i have two pairs of socks that are very similar and for a while i was like oh matching up here's the here's the large ones and here's the regular <laughs> ones why why are they both the same size 
<laughs> and it's not, of course, is it? It's because I've got two pairs of identical socks and I've got a left and a right foot. And I was wondering why one was uncomfortable in each one. It's such a dope. It took me, honestly, it took me ages. It took me ages. I was like, why did I buy one pair of large and one pair of regular? I'm just like... And it, yeah, just, by socks. just uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's such, such an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, uh, I'm, now I'm assuming, and I hope this isn't too personal a question, uh, that uh, while you was doing your little trot around the desert, uh, your feet probably niffed quite badly. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, no, they, yeah, they absolutely did. They honked, and it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I guess uh, yeah, these, there's um, and and I, can, I think. The the far end of the scale is the times when I've had trench foot or or yeah. similar, and uh, I think yeah the the, yeah. the 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 ultra stuff in the UK particularly. I think uh, you know after like the Lakeland fifty, running o- yeah. or training over boggy terrain and stuff is just it's just yeah. it's just monkey, isn't yeah. it? So, I did joke uh, with my friend when he, he finished the spine race uh, along the length of the Pennine Way in in January, and um, if uh, if we'd had to write down his um, state of health uh, just from the soles of his feet which were white mm. uh, devoid of all living tissue apparently um, we would have just put down deceased because he, yeah. <laughs> he just looked dead, yeah. his feet just looked dead and uh, what you don't want obviously is them drying out really quickly um, from from that sort of scenario because they will just just crack and, and bleed and um, which is pretty grim so uh, he came to stay hours after when he finished the race and we were looking around for any form of moisturizer mm-hmm. in the house and I was just uh, dug around and, and found some stuff of dubious vintage and but it looked quite posh so I said try this, try this. <laughs> brilliant <laughs> And uh, which he did and uh, woke up the next morning and his, his feet just looked amazing <laughs> <laughs> no way. Just having a load of moisturiser on, and I've done this myself when I've been on uh, multi-day backpacking trips or uh, on expedition. I think my one one of my expeditions was my only luxury was a pot of or a, a bottle of Johnson's baby lotion, yeah. and uh, I ended up um, getting dry, yeah I got trench foot, my feet dried out, and oh, it was really painful. So basically, just and it stung like hell. Yeah. yeah. Um, massaged in a ton of baby lotion and just like well this is all i can do and uh, and put my socks back on and got in my sleeping bag and uh, and it did work it's magic overnight i could actually walk the next day <laughs> yeah no, the, 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 well that's just brilliant as well though isn't it something so simple doing that but it is the smell is just uh, is is honking and i know i was gonna I, I think we'd mentioned in what i think it was the base layer one about um having um silver included in some of the yeah. some of the and and that i've had socks before that have uh, included silver as part of the, the the manufacture which it supposedly gets rid of smell i don't know how that well, works it, just, or... it means or it creates an environment where bacteria don't want to grow uh, yeah. you can get copper versions as well in socks um but uh, essentially the, the 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 smell is caused by the bacteria feeding on dead skin cells and uh, and there's an awful lot of dead skin cells on your feet if you don't mm. clean them they'll they'll just kind of sit there and the, the more sort of dead skin cells you've got the more bacteria and the more your feet will smell so foot cleanliness is is really the way to to, to keep your socks from stinking um and it's actually worse when you've got um your hormones going a bit bonkers so that's why teenagers have really grim feet. yeah yeah um pregnant women as well um it can be pretty bad uh and then if you like me and your menopausal as well <laughs> it's, got, oh. it's just a, a raft of smelly feet as you go through yeah life, well, yeah yeah you just gotta manage um, it then yeah <laughs> yeah but you've actually got um tw- 125,000 sweat glands in one foot um, so uh, they can pump out a lot, and on a regular day, apparently, according uh, uh, to uh, to a website um, I found, your foot will give out 50 milliliters of sweat a day. So that's five, or sorry, no, it's ten little five mil medicine spoons, isn't it, from your yeah. your cowpaw pot? Um, I like that from your cowpaw uh, of, pot. <laughs> of, of, of liquid sweat every day. Um, so if you put yourself in a running scenario or um a high altitude scenario where you've got a completely non-breathable boot or, or around mm. your foot um but you're still producing that much moisture 
God knows how much sweat is coming yeah. out through, uh, through your feet. It's a colossal amount of actual liquid. So all of that, if you haven't got socks that will wick away, we use that word wicking mm. again. We talked about that last week with um, with layering. Um, if you haven't got socks that will transport that moisture away from your foot, um, then it's all going to pool around your foot. And that's another reason how you get trench foot. Again, it's not just the water coming in and that wet environment. It's actually the wet environment that's created by your foot inside the shoe yeah. that we need to protect our feet from um, abrasion and from... Um, from from regular use so yeah. and, and movement over rocky terrain as well yeah it is it's that it's uh, that front back side to side round and round yeah. and all the rest of it that, that particularly in normal life in a in an urban environment we're just not used to and then you yeah you're, yeah you're right. on you're on a on 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 the, on the hillside in, in yeah in heavy boots or whatever or on a mountainside and your foot's moving all over the place isn't it yeah. um yeah and that, I guess, that comes back to the. It's, it's similar to the waterproofing conversation, then, isn't it? So, if you're wearing waterproof boots, on the yeah, yeah that that won't let anything in, then there's a good chance they're not going to let anything out either. And you've got all that humidity, that moisture is just trapped inside that 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 yeah, that foot. Yeah, I'm the grossest my... thing actually is using vapor barrier liners. A lot of um, high altitude or people uh, high altitude climbers or people working in extreme cold environments. Um, we'll use a, yeah, a vapor barrier liner. Um, and that means, we, we, again, we talked about in, in previous podcasts about moisture being the enemy of insulation. Mm. So if you must, if it's absolutely imperative that you keep all of your insulation working as well as it can, it mustn't get wet. Mm. So if you keep that moisture next to your foot, then your insulation is going to be able to work to the best effect um so you effectively put your foot or hands if you like you can use vapor barrier liners in hands you can use them in sleeping bags as well if you want um, but it's a deeply unpleasant experience and you need to be extremely careful on your um bodily care if you are using them because you're trapping all that moisture next to your skin um but it's there obviously to make sure that insulation works to the to the greatest effect and I guess yeah, to, to to take that to the next extent, to me is it's like it's peeing in your wetsuit when you're going swimming. Is the say a similar effect? Is yeah, I guess it's trapping that warmth next to next yeah. to your body as far as as far as uh, yeah. yeah um, as far as that goes, it's it's not particularly gri- uh, not particularly uh, yeah. I hope nobody's eating the tea while they're listening to this anyway today. Uh, with all, the, all this talk about trench foot and everything, and then well well post care then I think is is the other bit as well. So there's a bunch of preventative stuff as far as uh, lubrication as well, which can help. So that yeah the you know the vaselines, the pseudocremes, and all that sort of business. I yeah and um, what's the one that cyclists use all the chamois cream, isn't it? Of course that yeah yeah, that, um, yeah body glide. There's, there's there's a whole a whole uh, a whole ream of them um so yes you can definitely use that on areas if you're prone to blisters for example um then uh, then yeah normally if um i'm on a long run i'll just pop a bit in between all my toes there's a couple of areas that i know i've got a bit of um hard skin that i just it's just there if you're running all the time it just pops up um the if keeping actually foot care is critical yeah. and um if you do keep that hard skin down um and like treat yourself to a chiropodist if you're going to go and do a big event or if you're going off on an expedition um give yourself a little pamper before you go and um get your feet in in top condition because if if they're if they're not in the best condition you, it can ruin a trip mm. basically um we've, and we've nails is as important as well then i was just going to say yeah. is like making sure your nails are cut appropriately and not oh, just definitely. hacked out or whatever and then yeah that yeah, yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah. 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 they through socks yeah well ex- yeah <laughs> exactly yeah yeah um yeah yeah but um you uh, yeah removing hard skin with the pumice um that is that really helps because if that if it's that hard skin that gets damp and soggy the bacteria goes straight to that area mm. and um so uh, yeah you're going to get nippy socks but also if you do get any blisters um they are going to get infected and that's a, a pretty unhappy scenario um in fact that absolutely killed my, one of my husband's first himalayan trips um uh, it, a blister got infected and it was 
was oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's just a very <laughs> unpleasant experience, then, isn't it? Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bl- blister yeah. care then is is a, is a is a thing, and I know uh, there's the next thing for me to talk, talk about is then how do you how do you treat those? So if you have if you you, you haven't managed to prevent them, f- however that's arisen, uh, then what 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 do you what do you go on and, and do? And the the um, brilliant Doc Trotter in the Sahara, so they have a, this vast medical team. Honestly, has got a in there. It's huge. They've got they say they've got more they've got better medical facilities on that event than the most small to medium-sized towns in france have um so blister care they're just fairly regular though they, 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 yeah obviously they're fairly regularly dealing with it so basically they'll they'll do they'll you'll they'll be sat there with a scalpel they'll say show us your foot it's like quick scalpel right ah the blister's gone right uh, let's pour some uh it's zinc uh zinc oxide i think it is what what they use in it which burns like no, nothing you can but then right. then it's just like it's it's almost cauterizing it turns it really really shiny and hard and then and then they go, they just strap it up and off you off your trot uh but yeah they, they, it's, i've i've always been uh, unsure whether you should drain a blister and then wrap it or leave the blister and that's part of the protection i don't know what is it uh, is it a this personal is, this thing is a big question yeah mm, to lance or not to lance yeah. is the uh, is the big question um according to the nhs uh, they suggest that you leave your blister be because it's obviously the body's response mm. um it's just created that um little cushion of um pus if you want yeah, pus, yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it to protect the damaged skin underneath um so uh, so according to the nhs you should you should leave that there but of course that isn't always practical um and uh, i'm sure the nhs don't build in running across <laughs> vast distances in their uh, in their how to manage blisters um if you do lance it basically you're then opening up that damaged skin underneath to the air and to potential infection so um i mean you can cover it with all manner of different things you've got um well we've got a whole wall of different coverings um but if you do lance it just you know be aware you've got an open wound and you need to keep it clean if you're on an event of course you've got medics to help you with Mm. that um if you're uh, on a on an expedition you might not have um and that's why it's a good idea to carry iodine tablets or pure pure water purifiers so you can just dip your foot keep it clean um and make sure nothing nasty gets in there's a big um debate on ultras about using things like compede that uh, stick over the skin because that can work fantastically well but if you're on multi-day events um the comp or your skin is more flexible than the compede and that can create blisters around the outside yeah. so then you've got to take off your compede with all the bliss oh, ah no, I, I, no. I have been i have been, sub- I have been subject to that yeah it's like oh. is, is all is this weird wrinkling that goes on and you're like which, yeah. which what's my foot and what's the compede and then yeah, trying to no, yeah, no. yeah 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 oh. trying to gently trim something off and you're yeah. like yeah that yeah. Like, that wasn't a plaster that was yeah yeah that no, was a, no 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 yeah and it's but, no. but but saying that i am a huge fan of compede and always 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 yeah compede yeah. is my is my go to if i've got if i've got blisters on yeah. on longer stuff multi day stuff on a, just a, a day trip or and you're going back somewhere at night where you can properly just soak it off or after a couple of days you know you can soak it off in the bath that's normally the best way of yeah. getting rid of it um but yeah it's absolutely got its place but yeah, if, if you're on longer events, then it might not be the best. Yeah. I'll, but then, but then, my SpongeBob SquarePants Elastoplast isn't going to do the uh, isn't going to do the set of the job either. That's all. It's it, it cause is you get the humour effect, but not the uh, or my Peppa Pig ones for the for the daughter as she as she was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Although a plaster is better than no plaster, I think we're training training for. Uh, when I was living down in Bolton. I was training for the New York Marathon with um, my mate Glyn. And we were running around Rivington, and I'd fallen over. I think I'd, I'd nipped over a wall to, for a call of nature. Come back and managed to wrap my leg around a bit of barbed wire, and we're like four, four miles into a twenty-mile training run or something. I've got, I ended up with blood gushing, gushing. It was gushing yeah. out out of my hand, uh, and we, we just carried on anyway. And uh, and um, I was like, yeah, I've got. I had no first aid kit or anything. I asked Lynn and. Uh, we got to yeah i think i think it was mile 19 and we're running back to the car park and he went oh do you know what i have got a plaster in my bag 
<laughs> and he was like, oh, fantastic. Thanks very much. I could have bled to death, but and ever since then I've carried uh, I've carried comedy plasters in my in my in my first aid kit for whatever reason is yeah. So there's always a Spider Man or SpongeBob SquarePants or something. Just so you can wrap it. Yeah, hardcore runners wrap it with a SpongeBob SquarePants around your finger. brilliant though. Um I'm 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 gonna have to go we we we're just coming up to thirty minutes of chat. Oh, yeah. So I'm just. Yeah. Do Do you want to? Should we Should we call it a day there and come back to it? And if If it needs be at another time, we've had, as as always, a built in discussion. Uh, and we've covered. Yeah, we have covered he- hygiene, comfort, blisters, fit, a bit of that. We've got loads to come back to as far as stuff around. I think biomechanics as well as and and how you know how toe splay comes in. You know the monkey foot argument. All, 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 there's all, all sorts there, so I've got a big long well, list. Yeah, of... we didn't even get to sock height, which is actually pretty important as right. well. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. And uh, but actually, you have been saved from the story of the fleas that got in my socks on. Yeah, mo- right. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's for another time. Wrap he says, up, "Yeah, I know. I've had enough nausea this morning. Thank you." Um, so that yeah, that's been outdoor gear chat. We've been uh, talking about uh, our feet stinking. Uh, so be, please do uh, give us a like, subscribe, and all that sort of gubbins on your podcaster if you've enjoyed it. And um, we'll be back again next time with what we're talking about next time. He says, "Oh, slipping, oh, slipping, slipping to something, something silky." silky. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, and for the sleeping bag liners. Oh, you spo- <laughs> you spoiled it there. I think we we should have just left it. So we, yeah, we'll catch you with slipping to something silky next time there are more uh, much more information on our buyer's guide to socks um that you can find on www.climbersshop.com and we also have um the history of socks in our knowledge section on uh, our joe brown outdoor academy website which is www.joebrownoutdooracademy.com <laughs>